let's look at how we can think of a function as an object, or conversely, think of an object as a function. So what is the typical purpose of a function? It accepts some arguments, it possibly performs side effects, and computes a return value, as we've seen. For an object, it accepts inputs, it possibly performs side effects, and then it computes a set of outputs. So the main difference here is that an object can compute a set of outputs. Typically, a function computes just a single return value, although in common list, it is possible for a function to return more than one return value. We're going to typically, it returns a single return value. An object can return one or more outputs, or can produce one or more outputs. Another bigger difference is a Lisp function, you just simply call it by name. It's a one-step process. For an object, you have a two-step process. First, you create an instance of the object, or get a hold of an instance somehow. Then you send messages to the object to get it to reply with some outputs. And we'll see how this works in some interaction in just a minute. Now, how do you define a function? You say defun, and then the name, and then argument list, and then body, just like we've seen in the example. For an object, you define it, it's pretty similar. You use define object as the operator instead of defun. You still give a name. This is, will be the name of the object rather than of a function. But now instead of an argument list, you give a mix-in list. The mix-in list is other objects that this object inherits or takes on characteristics of. The mix-in list can be empty. Then a specification list, which is your input slots, your computed slots, and so on. It specifies exactly how the object will behave. Um, final difference is how do you decompose complexity? In a compl complex system, or even moderately complex system, it's very important to decompose the complexity somehow so that you can work on manageable little chunks. In functional programming, you simply have functions that call to other functions. So you have one function and you keep it relatively short by having it call other functions instead of including all of the logic for everything that you want to do inside one huge function. With objects, there are two ways that you can decompose the complexity. One is you inherit from other definitions using mix-ins. And the other way is you include child objects inside of your object so you can dispatch or delegate actual work for computing results to child objects which contain the complexity within themselves. They can be simpler. Your object can remain simpler when you delegate the actual work to a child object. Now we'll go right into seeing how this applies specifically. So the syntax for define object, like we said, you have a list, as always, then you have the operator define object, then a definition name, and then your list of mix-ins. And this can be empty. This probably should be inside square brackets to indicate that it can be left empty. It's optional. Then you have your specifications. Specifications make up the meat of the object definition. The definition name is a symbol. Mixins is zero or more names of other definition names. And the body is the specifications. And these are keyword slash value pairs, and you'll see exactly what that is soon.